Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, take k of each character from left and right. Interesting problem today, I'm not gonna lie, this one did kind of piss me off just a tiny bit. I went down the wrong path for that. The idea is relatively simple conceptually. We're given a string that only consists of three different characters, a, b, and c, and we're given an integer k. What we wanna do is basically we have a pointer here and a pointer here. We're allowed to choose characters from either end of the string. So if I want to, I can pick this A and then I'd have to shift my pointer inward. And then maybe I could pick this A as well. And also maybe uh, this B as well. And then my pointer is over here. And then maybe from this side, I pick these five characters and then my pointer is all the way over here. Uh, let me use green. I chose these three characters and then I chose these three. These are the ones that are remaining. And this is the solution to this problem because that variable k equals two that we're given means that we want to choose at least two occurrences of each character a b c so if you count up what we have so far it looks like we actually have four a's and for the b's we have exactly two of them for the c's we have exactly two of them over here so in total we chose eight characters and this is the minimum number of characters we have to choose in order for us to have at least two of each character. It looks like we have a couple extra A's, but that's not a problem because there wasn't any way to avoid that. This pointer, sure, you could have shifted it to the left, but then instead of removing an A, like an extra one of these two A's that we have, we have four A's, you end up removing the B. Same thing with this pointer. If you keep shifting it, you're not gonna remove these A's first, you're gonna remove a C. And we actually need every B and C that we have. We didn't have any extra of those. So I'm gonna briefly show you the train of thought that I had, and then I'll give you a clue on the actual optimal solution to this problem, and then we'll go ahead and explain it. I think the clue and the thought process is really the key takeaway from today's problem. The solution isn't super difficult. I mean, it's difficult if you've never solved something like this before, but the most important thing is definitely the thought process. So I thought this is a medium problem. Okay, we have two pointers. It doesn't look like we can be greedy given that we can't predict the future. I mean, if I had, let's say, an A on this side and an A on this side, how do I know which one am I supposed to choose? I have no idea. I can't predict which characters are coming next here or which characters are coming next here. So that tells me that, well, we might have to backtrack. We might have to try every possibility and then among those figure out, well, what was the minimum number of characters we actually had to choose? So backtracking would probably be uh, exponential two to the power of N, but we can possibly add some memoization to that. And it's technically possible. That's why I did, and maybe some of you did as well, went down the wrong path because memoization is possible and it does improve the backtracking solution quite a bit. And when I say memoization, that is a dynamic programming technique. I won't be going over that like super in depth. I think those of us that are good at dynamic programming, we recognize that this problem is actually pretty trivial to solve if you uh, do it recursively, if you do the memoization solution. So that's why I thought, given that this is a medium problem, maybe that is the intended solution. If you don't know anything about this, you could probably check out Nikod.io for a lot of resources and courses on it. Um, but this was not the approach to today's problem because if we were gonna do memoization, the parameters we'd be passing into that would be a left pointer, a right pointer, and we'd probably have to maintain the count of three different characters, A, B, and C, and we'd have to obviously count each of those separately, and the max count of each of these, even though we just want at least K occurrences of it, it's possible we might have a large number of A's, a large number of B's, but not enough C's. So in the worst case, the size of each of these could be up to N, proportional to N at least. Same thing with right, same thing with left, like these are gonna be proportional to N. So this solution, I think roughly like in the worst case would be something like N to the power of five, even with memoization. I don't usually look at the constraints of the problems, so I didn't actually quite catch this. But if you have the length, which in our case is what N is, in the worst case, it could be 10 to the power of five. Well, if you raise that to the power of five, you get, I think, 10 to the power of 25. 
a very, very large number. That's a big hint of why this solution won't work. I usually don't look at the constraints though, because in interviews, you usually don't get constraints. So before I started implementing the solution, I just took a peek at what the intended solution was for this problem. And then as soon as I saw the hint, which is like the pattern that this problem falls into, I immediately knew what I had done. I had made a classic blunder. The clue is this, this problem can be solved with the sliding window algorithm. You might be thinking that doesn't really make a lot of sense, and if you are thinking that, it is reasonable because we have two pointers. How could that uh, be a sliding window when the two pointers are initialized at the ends of the array? We're choosing a prefix and we're choosing a suffix from the array. How does that fall into the sliding window? Well, the answer to that problem, sorry for the light theme here, is basically math. There's this long ass LinkedIn post. Well, it's not that long, I guess, just a couple sentences that I made. But this is a very, very useful technique when it comes to leak code problems and honestly, just problem solving in life. Invert, always invert. If you're solving a hard problem and you don't know what to do, invert the problem. What that means in this is think about the problem in reverse. What we're trying to do is choose the minimum number of elements, well, I guess this was that, the minimum of these such that the count is greater than K for A, B, and C. Well, we could take that problem and think about it in reverse because yeah, we can't predict the future as we have the two pointers we're trying to shift in. But if you think about the problem in reverse, you could also say, well, this is the region, the elements that I did not choose. I want to maximize this window because instead of thinking about two separate parts, a prefix and a suffix, I now only have to worry about one contiguous part. That's a little bit more easy to reason about. At least in the context of code, when it comes to the math, it's going to be a little more tricky maintaining the counts because think of this. We want to maximize this window such that the counts of this region and this region still satisfy this condition down there. So how exactly do we do that? Well, first you have to recognize that if we have this window, within this window, all we will have is the count of characters inside of the window, but we want the count of characters outside of the window. How do we get that? Well, again, I think conceptually it's pretty simple. I'll just draw a picture because I think this is probably the easiest way to explain it for most people. Imagine I have a circle and then imagine inside of that circle, I have a little circle here. I just want the area of everything inside of the big circle except for everything inside of the little circle. Now you tell me, am I gonna somehow write a formula to compute the area of this region from scratch? That seems hard to do, but it seems a lot easier just to take the area of the entire circle and subtract from it the area of the little circle. That's what we're gonna do. That little problem solving technique, which I think is relatively simple when you think about it in these terms, is exactly what we're applying to this problem. In other words, I'm going to get the total count of A, B, and C. And then as I have my like sliding window in here, which we haven't really discussed how we're going to implement that just yet. But as I have that window, then let's say I have this window and let's say inside of this window, I'm maintaining the counts of A, B, and C. And I have that. That's my current count then it becomes pretty straightforward to calculate the counts of characters outside of the window. You just take the total minus the current count. Okay, so now how does that help us? Now, let's just assume we have a straightforward way. Given a sliding window, we can easily calculate the counts outside of that. What are we trying to do? We're trying to maximize the window starting from every possible position such that the counts outside are greater than or equal to K. As long as that's the case, we will be increasing the window. So now I think it falls into a very simple sliding window problem template. If you're not familiar with this, I don't expect you to easily understand like how a sliding window works. I think that's what a lot of my other videos are for. Also, you can probably check out the Neat Code um, Advanced Algorithms course for a few lessons on the sliding window approach. But now that we know all this, the problem is straightforward. Start from the beginning over here. Make the window as big as you possibly can so that the counts of everything else satisfy the condition. So my left pointer is here. I'm going to keep shifting my right pointer. I'm over here. This window is valid because the counts here are valid. Now, if I shift it one more time,
name, and then I have this. This is actually not valid anymore because we need exactly two Bs and we just gave up the second B. So there's only one B left here. So this is actually not invalid. Now we would be shifting our a left pointer. And so then the next time we would be over here, the left pointer would also be over here. And this window is valid because everything else outside is valid. So now we will be increasing the window. We'll keep shifting it. Uh, right pointer will end over here. And then if we try to shift it any further, we will consume this C and we don't want to do that. We need exactly two C's outside of the window. So at that point we will stop. I think left pointer will be here. Right pointer will also be here. We will shift the right pointer to be here. And then this is another valid window. But if you were to have looked at all the windows we had discussed earlier, this one was, of course, the maximal. The length of that window was four. So what does that tell us about the number of characters outside of the window? We'll just take the length of the input. It looks like that is 12. And you take the total length minus the window length, and you get eight, which is the number of characters outside the window, which is the solution to this problem. The sliding window approach is linear time, and I don't believe we'll need extra space other than just to store the counts of A, B, and C, but that should be relatively easy. That's just three variables, and in our case, it'll be easier to do it with an array. So now let's get started. You might have forgotten the things I had discussed earlier, so let me remind you, we're gonna get the total counts of the characters, and then we're gonna do the sliding window. I guess one thing I didn't mention is that it might actually not be possible in this problem for us to have exactly K, A, Bs, and C characters. And if that's not possible, we would want to return negative one. There are multiple ways to handle that. I think the easiest would be just after getting the total counts, we should know if it's possible. So at that point, um, we can return negative one. So I'll just kind of add a condition here, if invalid then return negative one. We'll do a little replacement for this. Um, but to actually get the total counts, first idea you might have is have three separate variables, something like this. And yeah, that technically works. Let's go through each character in S. I know that this variable is already used. Don't worry, I'm gonna get rid of these in a second. But if you were to do that like this, you'd need three different if statements. You'd need to check like, is this A? If so, increment A, blah, blah, blah. The next idea you might have is, well, it might be easier just to use like a hash map, a count hash map. And that definitely is better because then we can just do something like this, uh, count of that character, add one. I think this is perfectly fine. This is sufficient. But I think a slightly better approach would be to use an array. It's not really better, I guess. And in fact, it might even be less readable. But I know some people are going to comment that you didn't need a hash map. You could have used an array. And I think that is correct because given the fact that the characters A through C are contiguous, we can use that to our advantage. We can say that A should correspond to index 0, B should correspond to index 1, C should correspond to index 2, and we can do that by using the ASCII values. So I'm going to get the ASCII value of the current character, so C. I'm going to subtract from it the ASCII value of lowercase a. This will provide us the mapping that I just discussed earlier. Lowercase a will now be mapped to 0, B will be mapped to 1, C to 2, and we'll increment the count accordingly. Now we're done with that. How do we determine the invalid part? Well, basically, if any of these three values is less than k. In other words, if the minimum of any of those is less than k, we want to return negative 1. So now we have that. Now let's get into the sliding window approach. Remember, the result is the number of characters we have to actually take. That's not the size of the window. That's the opposite. That's the inverse of the size of the window. So we're trying to minimize this. So we're going to set it to infinity. And then when we return, we will return the result. Now, my sliding window template is pretty simple. I always have a left pointer out here. In Python, I do for r in range length of the input, which is the string s. And as I take this character, s at index r, and I say now this character is a part of my window, I'm saying that the characters outside of the window now have been decreased by this amount, by this character, if this is lowercase a, then the counts outside of my window should be decremented by one for lowercase a. So here, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say count the ASCII value of this character because we do wanna do that mapping I talked about earlier. So the ASCII value of this minus the ASCII value of lowercase a should now be decremented by one. So now this count variable tells me the count of characters outside of our sliding window. 
And I want my window to always be valid. So if I see that by taking this new character, this one character, I have now made the outside characters invalid, then I'm gonna say while the minimum of the count is less than K, let's shift the left pointer, let's slide the window. And the reason I only need to consider the minimum is because I assumed that count was valid by the time we started the sliding window approach, because if it wasn't, we would have returned negative one in the first place. Assume something like this, let's assume that the counts were two, two, and two, and assume that K is equal to two. When I decremented the count, I only decremented one of them. All three of them were invalid, so if I decremented the count, I only made one of them invalid. I only set like this one to be, let's say, invalid, and it's one now. So rather than having like three if statements to check each of those positions, I can just, once again, just take the minimum. Um, so there we go. And don't forget to actually update the count as you shift the left pointer. So let's do this. By shifting the left pointer, we are removing the character at position left from the window. So like this. And if we're removing it from our window, we're adding it to the characters outside of the window. So we're actually gonna do a plus one here. Remember, we're solving this problem with inversing uh, the problem. So now outside of here, after this loop is done, we assume that the window is valid. It might be possible that the size of the window is actually a zero, but technically that would always be valid. So we will always just say result is equal to minimum of itself, as well as the length of the string minus the size of the window. The size of the window will be right minus left plus one. Um, up here, we don't need to say while the left pointer is in bounds or anything like that. Sometimes you do. We'll actually never get an index out of bounds error because if our window became of size zero, it's always going to be valid. So as soon as the left pointer reaches the right pointer, uh, this loop will stop anyway. So we're done there, I believe. And I think this is the whole code. Let's give it a run. As you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. This is the optimal solution. There might be some like micro optimizations you can make here and there, but the overall time complexity is optimal. If you found this helpful, definitely check out neatcode.io. Specifically, I think you'd find the sliding window section pretty useful if you weren't able to solve today's problem. All of these, by the way, have multiple solutions. So you can work your way from like the brute force to the sliding window approach. And if you want my thought process and an explanation, you can always watch the video. It's free. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.